What is up everyone today? We'll be taking a look at a triple normal team featuring my newly built XL Zangus. I felt that Zangus was going to be really strong in the current meta because, well, currently there are a lot of ghosts around which Zangus can just destroy with the Night Slash and Shadow Claw combination. Besides that, there's a lot of Walrein, a lot of Steel, which can hurt really badly uh, with the close combat. And there also weren't that many fighters, which is uh, Zangus's main threat and if there are fighters it's usually like Scrafty or Shadow Machamp which both take a lot of damage from close combat. So I tried it out and it's not as good as I was expecting to be honest but it still put in a lot of work. In this team I put it uh, as a closer uh, because Zangus is incredibly squishy it really can't take many fast moves so ideally to make it work you want to get a couple shields down you want to get a little, of, a little bit of an energy lead. And if you can do that, Zangus can really destroy it. Close combat just hurts everything so badly. I'm pairing it uh, with Pidgeot in the lead. Ingredient on the safe switch as like an ABB line. Pidgeot uh, covers Zangus quite well. Its main weakness, of course, are the fighting types. And uh, Pidgeot does beat those. And Ingredient as a safe switch is, is there just to lure out those fighting types. So... Pidgeot doesn't catch a fighting type on the lead. You want to go into the Greedent, lure it out, and once uh, it's gone, uh, Zangus can usually sweep. That's the, that's the idea of the squad. It's a bit of a meme team, I gotta be honest. I think uh, Pidgeot, uh, there's probably better Pokemon you could put in a the lead there. Something like a Talonflame might be a little more solid. Would help a lot versus the Charmers as well, which are also a bit of a problem for Zangus because you really can't take that many Charms. But Pidgeot still did really well. What I enjoyed a lot about this team is that it's triple strong against Ghost. Whenever you see a Ghost on the opposing team, you are very happy because it has nowhere to go and you usually win those games. Anyway, in this game, uh, I just think Pidgeot is going to be able to close this off. There was a Giratina on the opposing side. And uh, yeah, after this Dragon Claw, it's going to go down and it is a uh, good game right here. Yeah, that is nothing to Pidgeot. Bye bye. Next game, we see a wall rain lead. This is quite bad. In comes a talent flame now. Every time you save swap Greedent, what you ideally want to try to do is get a shield advantage here versus talent flame. Unfortunately, that is quite uh, difficult because it takes three body stamps to kill and it only takes uh, like two flame charges plus the incinerates to, to kill you. So it's very likely you're just gonna lose out on this matchup unless you start investing shields yourself. Which honestly is also not really worth it. Yeah, I'm just gonna take this flame. Honestly, actually, in hindsight, no, actually, this because this body slam won't knock out. That's the thing. They don't have to shield this. I would have gotten to one more body slam if I shielded that move, but they wouldn't have had to shield both of them. We would have been a, in a one to one shield scenario, which I don't know, it's similar as a two to two shield scenario we have now. So. I don't mind this. They bring in a Trevenant versus my Zangus, which is quite nice. I think they just instant switched. They didn't want that Trevenant on my Pidgeot, so instead they have the on my Zangus. Which, when I was in this matchup, I was like, wow, this is really good for the Goose. But look at this. Actually doesn't do that much. That is so unfortunate. This is so disappointing, actually. Uh, like I said earlier, I thought Zangus was going to be really good, but it was slightly disappointing. And this is where you could see it is slightly disappointing, but... Uh, it is still gonna put in work later on, trust me. Here as well, opponent calls the Night Slash, which is wild. But honestly, I'm also kind of fine with that. Because getting this chip is nice. They actually call another one, which is like, alright, great. At this point, I can just bring in Pidgeot. I know shoot the first one. I probably just farm you down, right? Yeah, because I just go for the Feather Dance here. I didn't even need to go for the Feather Dance. I just did it just to be sure they can't farm me down. Probably couldn't have, but... They should just save. They threw a move anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna let it get this go, and at this point, I can Shadow Claw this down, and that's a GG from a Wall Rain lead. You love to see it. Alolan Nine Tails lead. This is a rough one. I gotta go into my Greedent here, and they bring in a Drapion again. Another matchup, which is not amazing. Oh, that is my game Turbo, whatever that I accidentally pull up. I just updated my phone recently, and it has like this new uh, this new thing. Or if I like swipe on the side of my screen, like the, the, the game turbo screen will up. And from it, from it, like that dock, I can like pick apps and stuff to overlay on my screen. 
I don't know exactly, but it's kind of annoying because I've been uh, accidentally swiping it up uh, when I've been doing charge moves, and in this matchup I actually missed some bubbles because of it, so yeah. Gotta, gotta watch out for that. But anyway, we are still in his, uh, in his greed and matchup. Uh, I'm just gonna throw these bully slams and actually win the zeros here. Preferably, I take a shield here. I'm really hoping they shield, but they let it go. That is so awkward for me, because now they still have a two shield, nine tails, and honestly, my pitch is just the best answer here. That is quite awkward, uh, because, uh, well, I take a lot of damage for these weather balls, so I gotta shield them, and these charms are also adding up, but yeah, it is my best answer. Which is why I said earlier, maybe a Talonflame in the lead would be a better idea. Better dance onto this A9. They no shield, which is crazy. They're bringing a Jellicent, though, which is really good. Only problem is, it's a bubble... Jellison, which is not amazing for the goose. I'm gonna let this go. Unfortunately, I should have thrown earlier, but because if there was a bubble beam, I needed to get my knights off slash off before uh, they got there. But luckily, well, honestly, unfortunately, there was an ice beam. But also, because it was ice beam, it didn't matter. I didn't throw the the knight slash earlier, so you know, kind of kind of got lucky there. But ice beam is quite painful. Puts me very low. I'm not gonna shield this. I need to save a shield for Pidgeot. The only way I'm gonna win this is if I can farm this down and then Feather Dance the A9 and then farm that down. Fortunately though, their switch timer is up, which means they can bring in the A9 right now. I've got like no farm. I get to the Feather Dance now, but I'm already in the red. So this is gonna be a real race. Whoever can farm whoever down will win the game. And unfortunately, I just barely get farmed down. All right, another Walrein lead. This is quite... Bad again, you gotta go into your uh, Greedent. In comes an S Cavalier. This is really, <laughs> really bad for Greedent. Luckily, I do have a neutral uh, crunch to throw her, and I do get the defense drop, which means, well, honestly, I don't think they have to shoot just yet, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try to grab a shield here. So I shoot up this, what I expect to be a Mega Horn, but they actually Acid Spray, which is insane. I feel like that is their only lose condition because. I get to another move. I don't know. At this point, I'm just hoping to throw another acid spray and I can get, get to the drum, but no, or to the crunch, but no, to actually get to the drum before me. Not great. Not great. But luckily, you know, I can farm this down and I will have a Brave Bird loaded for whatever comes in. You're gonna spray me again. That's fine with me. I am gonna tap the Brave Bird instantly. I'm expecting the Warren to come back in, and I'm hoping that since I throw instantly, the thing's a Feather Dance and a No Shield. I actually bring in Altaria though to tank this, so even better that I threw a Brave Bird because that did even more damage. Bring in my Zangus instantly because I am debuffed. Honestly, since it was the Altaria, I kind of wish I threw Feather Dance because then I could have stayed in, but no, actually, they would have switched to Warren anyway. But yeah, they're bringing the Warren, I'm bringing Zangus against it. I'm just gonna go sort of for a close combat right away. Bye bye, Walrein. That's pretty good. In comes Altaria now. Gonna throw this knight. I should throw it immediately just in case I get the boost for some extra Shadow Crawl damage. But I just waited because I'm stupid. Uh, but yeah, I don't get the boost anyway. So it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Anyway, take a shield. Take a shield. They have a lot of energy though. They might be able to get the two sky attacks before I get the Feather, feather Dance, but they don't. I get the Feather Dance and this should be game over. Another Walrein lead, lead win. You'll have to see a GG. Jelly Sand lead. Really good. Like I said, you love to see the ghost types because they basically got no play here. Well, unless it's a bubble ice beam jelly, then Goose and Pidgeot do not love to see it. In comes a Nita Queen though. This is kind of problematic for the squad because uh, it does damage versus everything. Like my, my Pidgeot is already in the yellow. Greedon generally loses when shields are, uh, are up. Uh, so I throw the Feather Dance first. Luckily, I get a shield there. Uh, makes sense. Uh, I think I think there was a proper bait by me there uh, because I think the chance of their shooting there is quite high since a lot of Pidgeot would just Brave Bird and dip there. Uh, so yeah, this is the one scenario where I would definitely recommend you throw uh, a Feather Dance. I think a lot of a lot. I think if you play Pidgeot though, you want to throw Brave Bird most of the time because a lot of players are expecting you to bait a lot. I I, I think there's some other matches still uh, in here where I throw Feather Dance immediately, and they just no shield. Like, no respect for the Brave Bird. So I think if you uh, just go Brave Bird most of the time, you'll have the most luck with uh, with this squad. All right, a load of nine tails sucks really hard for me. Uh, bring my Pidgeot into it again. It's my best counter at this point once Greedon is gone. Take a lot of charm damage. Gonna throw the Feather Dance, though, to take it out or 
Maybe to even take a shield. I doubt the shield at this point, though. It's not worth it. I actually survived that, but I gusted down. They're charmed with a lot of damage still, though. So very, very low health, which is actually fine. They get less far more than next Pokemon, which is good. She's a Nita Queen again. I love it. I'm gonna bring in the Goose here. Because my Greedent cannot take this out before it, it, it's get, it, it's gonna get taken out by the Nita Queen. And I want a Pokemon in the back ready so I can clear the debuff from Zangoose. That's the thing. If I go in Greedent, I might be able to get off one Body Slam. But then they get off a Poison... Then, then I die, they get off a Poison Fang on my Zangoose, which will probably shield. Uh, but then I'm a uh, Defense Drop, which is not great. No, so I wanna prevent that from happening. So I go into Goose. They did so much damage, though. Like, that Needle Queen was so low health when I brought in the Goose. They still brought me into the red, which is just insane. It's a Hex... Luckily, though, it's a Hex Jelly, which, uh, you know, does, doesn't do any damage to my normal types. So I throw one Night Slash. I go into Greedent here. Throw a Crunch. And at this point, uh, I should be over. Even if they Ice Beam here... I die, or the ball beam, or whatever. Should be fine. I have a nice slash almost loaded here. We take out the jelly, and it is a very close game. GG. Another ghost type in the lead. Not too bad. A Giratina this time. Honestly, the Dragon Claws do add up there. They, I think they threw at six there. Unfortunately, they did deny a gust, so that's not ideal. It's an ancient power as well, which is worse for me. It's definitely worse for me. Again, uh, I'm running Pidgeot in the lead. I'm running two Pokemon weak to fighting uh, in the back. So there's, this is no fighting type. I'm going to uh, go into Greedent just to lure it out if it's there. Uh, seems they're throwing a move though. So that might be quite weak to Greedent still. The throw a Dragon Claw and in comes the Sylveon. At this point, I get quite worried. Very worried actually. Because Giratina double charm is quite common. It's quite common. Well, it's not that common, but it is a thing. We saw it in the last video uh, where, I, where I showcased Como O. Uh, we faced a double charm line, and it was not fun. So I'm expecting another charmer in the back. Which is not great for Zangus, because Zangus just kind of gets destroyed by charmers. Throwing these body slams. We're going to get to the move here, so didn't throw my move. I don't really want to throw my move at this point because it's kind of a waste of energy to throw in such a low health mon. I'm assuming it's another charmer in the back, so I want to save my health and my body slam for that. They bring in Giratina. Uh, maybe I should have shielded this. Because I knew they were going to get to another move and I was going to shield up my Pidgeot either way. Because I want to feather dance whatever's in the back. It doesn't end up being a charmer though. So using all those shields was a bit of a misplay. If I would have just saved everything for Zangus, I might have been in a decent spot. Also, they no shield. They no shield. My freaking better dance. Like I said, dude. Like I said, just go Brave Bird always. They never shield. They don't respect it. They don't respect it. This might still be possible, though. They are dropped in uh, attack a lot, so their Icicle Spears won't do that much even to Zangus. And if I can just farm up to two close combats here, I might be all right. They go for the Earthquake, though, which is fine. They're going to have to clear their debuff eventually, which I'm expecting. So I don't throw my move. I farm down the Giratina. I go for the Night Slash Bait. If they call this, it's over, but they shield. That's really good. I get to the close combat, and that is a good game. I even got the boost there, but that definitely didn't matter. Bye-bye, Warring. All right, Swampert in the lead. Not a great situation. Because all three of my Pokemon are kind of meh versus Swampert. Well, Greedent is okay, uh, but Zangus and Pidgeot definitely a meh. I'm going to go for the Feather Dance right here. And I think this is the Swampert that will uh, that will no shield this. It is just very awkward. I just bring in my Greedent right here, though. Hoping to like lure the fighter potentially. And well, there it is. Maybe I should have stayed in with Pidgeot though versus that Swampert. Taking another Hydro. But yeah, let's say it is a fighter. Like an Obstagoon right here. I gotta lure it out, so I think that's a decent play. They go for Night Slash, that's good for, good for me, means I don't have Cross Shop, uh, and they can't hit my Greedent that hard. I'm gonna let this next Night Slash go through, of course. Hopefully Greedent can get to three Body Slams here. I think I might be able to get to three more Body Slams here, and that would take a shield from this Goon, so that'd be quite nice. Making sure I have proper charge with timing, throwing after one Bullet Seed to make sure they get the minimum amount of free turns. 
Another border sam coming through, and I should be able to get to another one. And that is a bye bye to the goon, or or they shield that, which whichever. Honestly, I would prefer they if, if they shield because then I have a sanguish with a shield advantage. But he doesn't shield, and it's quite awkward again. Though they bring in the swamp again, this is fine because I can likely farm this down with a Pidgeot if I if I just spent one shield. Luckily, Pidgeot is able to take two of these hydros. That is uh, that is pretty good. Actually, gonna let this go though. Ooh, I could have also just farmed down with the. Uh, Pidgeot. Oh, now we have Walrein versus my goose. This is not ideal. Two shields. I really wish I had taken a shield earlier, but no, my opponent decided to no shield everything for my Greedent, which was uh, unfortunate. I'm just gonna go straight for a close combat there. I feel like it's the only way to win at this point because they're just gonna farm me down uh, no matter what before I get to three moves. So, yeah, but maybe I th actually I could have gone to double Night Slash plus close combat. In hindsight, but I think I would have still gotten mud shot down, so I think I'll lose either one. So GG. Pidgeot versus S Cavalierly. This is pretty good. We're both hitting for neutral, but their counters are doing slightly less, and their charge moves are all resisted. Even though they are resisted, though, this Mega Horn will still do a lot of damage. I opt to no shield though, because I don't want to go shields down. Shields down with Zangus is just not a great idea. If they shield this though, it could be quite problematic. Uh, but they do shield it, which is nice. They instant switch, though, into the wall rain. Don't want to stay in there with the Pidgeot, so I switch it to uh, Greedent. Really nice matchup here. The Bullet Seeds are adding up. I can take a bunch of these Icicle Spares, and I just outspam with the Body Slams. Oh, a bunch of the Icicle Spares. I can only take two. The third will kill me, but the same counts for these Body Slams. I think uh, two or three will not come out with, uh, with the Bullet Seeds. Maybe two with the body, uh, Bullet Seeds. Uh, let's see gonna depend i think i'm definitely gonna have to shield up here yeah i will shield up here i kind of want to take out this wall rain and then have like crunch stored for the s cavalier i think that'd be ideal because the s cavalier is actually quite healthy still and can definitely counter down my pidgeot which uh, is not great of course go for another body slam this will put him very very low but won't kill him yet i'm kind of worried he's gonna get to another icicle spear he actually opts to switch out into the s cav and luckily, I'm able to get to the crunch here still because I farmed up so much energy versus the wall rain. We're gonna bring in the Pidgeot, hopefully farm this down, but no, they, they just live on a slither of health. We're gonna bring in the Zangos here. Maybe I should have brought in Greedent, but they instant through the Mega Horn here. They're doing quite nice to catch some Greedent, but like I didn't know they were gonna do that, do that so. Uh, honestly, it doesn't make much sense to throw instantly. There's nothing, well, actually, it does make sense because they were very low. Yeah, it does make sense, actually. It does make a lot of sense. Uh, it's a Needle Queen in the back end, dude. Even though Zangus is quite attack weighted, two Night Slashes just don't knock out. I needed the boost there. And even with the boost, they had, like, an Icicle Spear loaded and just killed me right there. So, well played by my opponent. GG. Battle of the Birds. This is a pretty iffy matchup and depends a lot on baiting. They Brave Bird here, I basically die. There's Flame Charge. That's fine. I'm gonna go straight for the bird here. Unfortunately, like, get a little bit of a lag and I don't throw immediately, which kind of sucks. But it doesn't matter because they let it go. Uh, in comes Lapras. I'm just gonna instant switch into the greed and definitely don't wanna stay into that matchup with my debuffed Pidgeot. Uh, I'm gonna throw these body slams before they can get to the Skull Bash. Because, well, after the Skull Bash, uh, they're gonna do less damage, of course. i throw another one. It looked like they didn't get one through, but I'm 100% they did get one through, as you can see by the health here and like the animation afterwards. Whenever you see that, when they do like an, uh, a fast move and a charge move at the same time, that usually means they got a fast move through during your uh, charge move, but it was just invisible during the charge move, so it plays the animation like during their charge. It's kind of weird. It's kind of really weird and stupid like that, but... Uh, yeah, they're not really getting, like, free energy or anything. So that's at least good. All right. Uh, we are getting a little bit of lag here, though, because we were out of sync there, which should not happen because we have equal uh, duration fast moves. So there was definitely a bit of desync there, which is unfortunate. Game uh, still kind of broken. They go for the Skull Bash here on my Zangus, which is, like, crazy. A Surf, I would have shielded as well. So it's kind of unnecessary. But uh, fine, that is actually really good. That thing is basically energy dry. Now here comes Swampert. We'll kill my Pidgeot. I brought out the Pidgeot because I want to burn his energy. Before I can uh, for I go for the double close combat here. Night Slash would not knock out. 
So I'm not gonna go for it. My opponent knows it actually, knows that I have for the close go have to go for the close combat, and that if I go double close combat, I I win. So they go for the only win con, which is no shooting a potential night slash. It's a good play there, but I take him out and I farm down the lepers as well. And it's a good game. It's the final game as well. Hope you enjoyed this uh video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Alright, bye-bye.